Good morning, and happy Mother's Day. Welcome to Community of Hope in Wilsonville, Oregon. We're so blessed that you're here with us on this uh, Sunday of worship and praise, and on this special day where we do recognize and remember uh, our moms, the, really the special women in our lives that have made such a difference. And we want to pray over you as we go into our prayer time today. And again, just give thanks to God for you. So happy Mother's Day. And may this day be, I know, unique, but a blessed day uh, wherever you may be uh, during this season that we're going through. So uh, praying for you moms, and we give thanks for uh, who you are. Uh, you'll be, have to make sure you stay on right when the worship service concludes, because the very, very final part of our worship service is going to be a, uh, a beautiful Mother's Day tribute video compiled by our very own uh, Hillary. She did an awesome job getting this together as always, so thank you, Hillary. And be sure to watch, because you'll see some little testimonials from each person on the video about what their mom uh, means to them, and just a happy Mother's Day greetings to special people in our lives. So again, God bless our time together today. Uh, a few things about uh, today and about uh, this week. Uh, we will be celebrating communion again today, so if you haven't already gotten a few things together, have some uh, bread and juice uh, together that you might celebrate near the end of our, our worship time with your family, just receiving again this precious promise from our Lord Jesus. So that will be happening uh, near the end of our service. Um, as we normally go through the week, these are the events that are happening with our, our youth, uh, middle school, high school, Bible class, and um, also don't forget on Wednesday just to tune in at 6.30 with Mike and uh, just a neat worship time uh, to kind of, as your day's winding up into the evening, uh, just a neat way to praise God together as a family as well. Uh, one other special time together is with Kids Church. So every Thursday at 9.30 a.m., uh, join Hillary and friends for the kids' church time. So enjoy that as well. Um, one uh, word about next week, we are concluding the main uh, sections of the story today as we're wrapping up with the book of Revelation today. Um, next Sunday, we're going to do something kind of unique. We'll have some uh, testimonials, some video testimonials about what the story and going through the Bible, how that's made an impact in your life and uh, what it's meant to you. So whether it's a 10-second word or maybe a two or three minute little clip, we're going to try to compile as many as we can, probably not everyone, but as many as we can, to uh, give a little video testimonial too about the story and going through the Bible and what that's meant. So if you could get that in by Monday, tomorrow, to Hillary or send something to me if you have a question about it, we would love to get that. So uh, again, be in touch, look in your... Uh, uh, emails about details on that as well. So send that testimony on in tomorrow. Uh, finally, just a reminder too, the newsletter goes out a couple times. There's little uh, info pieces that go out uh, twice a week, so Hillary's trying to keep that up to date. So if you're not receiving that, please uh, email the office to receive our email newsletter and updates that are going on continually. Um, also, thank you. We've been blessed again by you, and thank you for giving to uh, keep our ministries going in the midst of this uh, uncertain time. So we're so appreciative. Any way that you're able to give, uh, whether online or, or just through mailing a check, thank you, and God bless you as you give to the Lord and uh, continue to enable our ministry to, to keep on going forward. So thank you again. Um, also, ways you can participate, um, public prayer requests, you can write those in even right now. It's better to get those sooner rather than later towards the end of our service so we can compile them and can pray for you. So we've been receiving prayer requests each Sunday and throughout the week and just love to pray for our family and wherever you might be, whether you're right in Wilsonville or maybe you're watching from somewhere else in the world, uh, please send in a prayer request if there's a need or burden on your heart and I'll try as best as I can as they get compiled and sent to me, try to pray for for you and for, for those requests. Also, it's just nice to share this. So if you can share this service and through your influence and friends that you have on Facebook, uh, do that and share it, like things, whatnot. But a fun way to participate in the service as you can today. Uh, and here's the question of the week. As I get into my message this morning, as I start, I'm going to ask this question. What was the toughest physical challenge you have ever faced? And these could be, I suppose, kind of light or some athletic event or something like that. Maybe it's heavy. Maybe it's something that you've gone through, even an illness or a weight like that that you've gone through. But um, feel free to chime in on those um, and do that sooner rather than later once again because we'll be right at the start of my message. I'll be trying to highlight as many of those as I can as well. 
So uh, thank you again for worshiping today. Uh, thanks to our awesome team here. We got uh, Stephen and Louie and Mike and Jono. Thank you guys for being a part of this, uh, once again, this uh, special morning, and we do mean that. It's special because you're here, and the Holy Spirit is present, whether we're right here in the church building or in our homes, wherever we call upon the name of the Lord. He is with us. So God is with you. God is faithful. As we look into these promises in the book of Revelation, he's faithful to the very end. So uh, uh, let's again begin with some songs of worship and praise as we open this time together. Lord God, we, we thank you for everything that you do for us. We, uh, we are uh, your people and uh, we desire to worship and honor and glorify you. Uh, for you created all of this and you came to redeem each and every one of us, and you will come again. And we want to remember that today especially, Lord. So be with us as we sing your praise, prepare our hearts to hear your message, and help us to uh, understand uh, the importance of you coming again and the, the joy that that will bring uh, to each and every one of us. Uh, not necessarily then, but now, Lord. So be in our salvation, be in our, in our time of worship today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Good morning and welcome to Community of Hope. We're blessed to have you with us as we uh, continue to go through the Bible and we're here going through the Bible, the whole family, the whole Bible, the whole year using this resource of the story which compiles these core uh, true accounts from the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation and here we are now at the final week and uh, congratulations, you've made it this far, and for those of you that have been with us since the fall, again, you know it's been quite a process. We probably wondered, would we ever get here? And here we are, Revelation, and uh, as I mentioned um, uh, earlier in the announcements, uh, next week we'll have a unique service where we're going to have compiling testimonies, so if you can send us a short video clip, uh, or even putting words on an email or a page that we could read about your experience, but however you can do it, we'd love to get those video clips or just even written testimonials of what the story has meant to you going through the Bible in this unique way. So again, congratulations, great job, and uh, here we are now at uh, Revelation and reflecting upon the end of time, the end of time. And when Christ comes again. I want to start out with that question I mentioned, uh, asking you to think about. Um, what is the hardest, uh, most difficult physical challenge that you have been through? And I've already seen a few of these come in. Uh, I've seen some of them from, uh, you know, athletic events to the more real serious things of, of uh, illness, uh, injury. And so I wanted to start, as these are coming in, just to share with you uh, one of the things I was thinking about. Um... Again, I haven't uh, ever had any horrible illness. I haven't dealt with uh, cancer, uh, all those uh, painful and challenging times, and I pray for those going through those as we do. Or as I think about Mother's Day, moms that have given birth, wow, I will never know. But uh, praise God that for all that you've done and all you continue to do for your family. So I was just reflecting back on some uh, 22 years ago, uh, I went on a hike with uh, the youth group that I was with at that time from uh, Hawthorne, California, and uh, we went on this hike, 
uh, to, uh, we stayed in Yosemite, and, we, and many of us hiked up Half Dome, or attempted to hike Half Dome. And so uh, um, I didn't think it would be as long as it was. We started on the valley floor, and then made the hike up the, to, to one of the, some of the falls, cool falls areas. A few people left after that. And uh, it, it was hot. It was the middle of summer. I didn't bring enough water, but fortunately I had those pills where you can kind of make the water drinkable. So I'd put those in my water jug and shake it, and I was just determined to do it. And me and another uh, young man, uh, Derek, were the two that finally got to that final spot where you have to come the final ascent up to the top of Half Dome. And uh, at that final, final part... I didn't really know what to expect, but there's these cables, and you have to be within the cables, and you put on these special gloves, and you're able to walk up without too much fear of falling over the edge. And uh, it was uh, interesting. There were a lot of people there, and that was interesting, because if I would have just seen these cables by myself and no one around and go, okay, see what's on top, go for it, I don't know if I would have done it. But uh, as you see, there were people, and there are actually a lot of people going up. And I guess that's dangerous in itself, because if somebody slipped, they could probably take out a couple others. But I tried not to think of that, including the person right in front of me was a dad with a baby on its back, one of those baby carriers on its back. And the more I think about that now, I'm thinking, what was he thinking? But okay, there he, and he made it. But uh, I wanted to emphasize that part about not being alone. And there were many others making that ascent. And I know now you've got to put in reservations, and they only limited to a certain few and all that. But uh, after this longer-than-expected hike, I think it was about I don't know, 12 or 13 hours round trip, but uh, I did actually make it to the top and uh, was glad to have made that ascent because that kind of made it all worth it, right? finished, got to the top of the mountain, and in the midst of all the uh, pain and suffering, probably not being in as good a shape as I should have been in, not trained or whatever to do it, and you've, some of you have been on much more difficult hikes or mountain climbs, I know, but uh, uh, to make that ascent was, uh, it, it felt good to be able to complete that. And actually at that point it wasn't still over though, because there was only a few hours of daylight left, and we ended up in the dark, trying to find our car, lost, <laughs> so there's more layers to it, but uh, again, I want to get back to that idea that, you know, we weren't the only ones on that trail, obviously, that summer, and we, we made it um, because we were able to see, okay, it can be done, we can make it, we can make it through this, and uh, before I get to your testimonials, I'm going to, uh, actually, I want to read them right now, I'm going to read some of the responses of things and challenges that you have gone through. And hopefully we got these. Thank you to my son Caleb for compiling these. And here's a few that have come in. Hopefully we'll get them all. Let's see. Susan said, ooh, she had a near-death head injury from a horseback riding accident. Two years to recover. Wow. God is my rock and my strength. Wow. There. Puts anything I've ever done. I have never dealt with that big of a thing. Uh, Don said he had experienced boot camp in the Marine Corps in 1968. Wow. Don Nair. Good job. Uh, Pat, okay, Pat Baker, Marine Boot Camp, 1969, just a year later, and then Vietnam, 1970, again, huge things. Uh, Brian mentioned uh, running the Hood to Coast Marathon Relay, that's a huge thing I've heard too, see, all these are just putting me to shame, okay. Uh, Lila said backpacking in the White Mountains, okay, big backpacking trip, that would be a physical challenge, no doubt. Let's see, Charles uh, mentioned hitting the first hurdle in the 110-yard hurdles race and recovering to win. Whoa, who does that? Nice job, Chuck Benson. And uh, so all these important things, wow, that were significant, that were challenging, that were painful. I think I, I saw one, too, that came in from uh, Lisa uh, going through breast cancer and surviving that. What a battle, again. Uh, going through these times that uh, are unbelievably uh, challenging, uh, difficult. So uh, as I scroll through these, hope I didn't miss any there. But um, I love how we can sh just share and think about, again, uh, whatever we're going through to remember a God's faithfulness and that he 
is there. He is with us. And as we walk through life, and as we even get now through the book of Revelation, thinking about the final, final days that God will lead us through. And I'd like us to read a verse together uh, from uh, Hebrews 12 that uh, kind of reminds us again of uh, both the challenges that we go through and uh, the one that we can fix our eyes upon. And so if you'd like to read it with me or just read it, uh, watch it on the screen, but th- let's receive this, uh, this verse together. And if you'd like to read with me. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Powerful verse that reminds us again that we can fix our eyes on the one Jesus who has gone through even death itself and overcame even death itself. God raised him from death to life, And through Christ, we have hope and strength for whatever may come. As we look through these verses and go through this lesson, I I just want to remind you, if you go to our our website or back to the email you may have received this week, this outline and other worship resources are on our website if you want to follow through and uh, follow along with that. But um, I want us to think about, again, uh, these difficulties that you've shared. I want you to think about, again, today, what are the difficulties that you're going through right now in this life? What challenges are you facing? And remember for a Christian, this race ends in victory. I love that illustration that Chuck shared about uh, falling in the initial hurdle. I think about that life, the times that we fall, the times that we struggle, but getting back up again and having the strength to complete. And I love that reminder Chuck gave, wow, victory. Even through the struggle, even through the pain of some probably some kind of injury he had, he persevered and made it through. So, yeah, I can kind of say these questions that maybe seem obvious, the answers, but, you know, have you ever been weary? Have you ever wanted to just throw in the towel? Maybe in the time in life we're going through, or you just say, you know, I've had enough of this. I think many of you that are sequestered and quarantined and if you're in a, uh, uh, one of the assisted living or, or care homes, my heart goes out to you, not being able to see your family or not being able to travel outside and, and uh, just be out in the world on these beautiful spring days and, and again, seeing people, being connected with others. But I hope that you remember that great cloud of witnesses, that you're not alone. And in this unique way, we can see that we're not alone, we're together, and that God will be faithful to lead us through that. And uh, there's a great day coming. And uh, as uh, believers in Christ, uh, think about this, that you are being cheered on today uh, somehow by those who have gone before us, right, to keep going, keep running. Uh, and, and remember again that, that great cloud of witnesses that will await us too on that final day as we were welcomed into our eternal home. So getting to the lesson for today, Revelation, the final book. And it seems like forever since we were at the first chapter of Genesis back in September. And now we're here looking at the second coming of Christ. And this book of Revelation, some find it, yes, some find it hard. It is, there's many interpretations about the book and how everything is going to, uh, to conclude. Um, all the different millennial thoughts. And I remember one joke one of my Bible professors said when he talked about which theories do you follow as far as how the things will end. And he's, well, he said, I'm a, I'm a pan-millennialist. And we go, well, wait a minute, that's not a term. What, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, everything is going to pan out in the end. It's all going to work. God is going to be seen as leading in charge and uh, coming again. But he did give us some insight into how that will, will unfold. And uh, I think about this uh, vision that John, the beloved disciple, as he was on exile. And again, many of you feel like you're in exile. Maybe some of you have a similar hairstyle that John does now after all these uh, weeks being uh, uh, cooped up and not being able to go out. Or, but he was in exile, seriously, on the island of Patmos and was given this vision, though. God gave him this, uh, this vision to write. Uh, and we see in Revelation 119, 
Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. And uh, John was told to write to the seven churches, seven churches which, were all, which are all in modern-day Turkey. Uh, think about seven cities around us. Well, Paul was writing to these seven churches in these seven cities in a pretty close geographic area. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. Real people, real churches, and John was writing to exhort, to encourage, to, to challenge, even to convict uh, some that had forgotten their first love. And as he wrote these words to the churches, we see that after these letters, uh, that, that John writes then about what will happen in the future and when Christ comes again. So these revelations from God through Jesus Christ to John... And I want us to remember that as John writes about the second coming of Christ, we remember that Jesus himself spoke these words to John and the other apostles, the other disciples, and he promised his return uh, throughout passages in the New Testament and maybe no clearly than seen in, in John 14. And as we look at this passage, we remember Jesus said to his followers, "'In my Father's house are many rooms.'" If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. Remember that word, place. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. I want you to think about that word place that's underlined. A place. This is a real place. Uh, topos, word for place, which relates to topography, right? It's a, it's a real place, and, and, and it's being prepared. Uh, a new Jerusalem is being prepared now. A new city, and our cities are full of all kinds of things. They're beautiful and beautiful skylines, but they're also filled with congestion, smog, traffic, of course, other than now, but uh, the, the cities we think about have both good and bad. There's high crime in some cities, and there's other challenges, but a new city, and you, we think about, well, okay, I'm more of a country person, or I don't like city. Well, let's look at how he describes this new city, why we should be excited about this. Uh, this new Jerusalem, it's this image of heaven uh, coming down. So I'd like us to turn in our Bibles to uh, Revelation and to look at Revelation chapter 21. Uh, it should be the, one of the easiest uh, books and chapters to find today if you're just opening your Bible right there at the end of the, end of the scriptures. Revelation 21, um, one of the last chapters in the Bible. And we see in Revelation 21, we'll look at, uh, again, this promise of heaven, uh, the new Jerusalem, and what God is, is doing and what he will do. So I'll start with uh, 21 with verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And this uh, passage from Revelation is one of the most uh, meaningful passages. I, I think about these verses that uh, I reflect on often at the time of a memorial or a funeral service or a graveside service. And remembering again that whatever that person has gone through uh, as a believer in Christ uh, promised that eternal hope and that reminder that uh, tears are gone. No more death or mourning or crying or pain. And these are good words. This is good news for you and me today. 
A couple of thoughts on this that I want to think about with you and as we look at a couple other passages also um, in uh, Revelation 21 and 22, uh, I want us to remember a couple, couple things. First of all, God has space for us. God has space for us. And I'd like us to look a little dip, deeper into, as the verses can go on into chapter 21, look at this uh, city and the, the greatness of it. The angel who talked to me held in his hand a gold measuring stick to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. When he measured it, it, was found, it he found it was a square as wide as it was long. So pause for a moment here. The greatness of the city, the gates, the wall, as wide as it was long. In fact, its length and width and height were each 1,400 miles. So I'll read that again. Its length and width and height were each 1,400 miles. Then he measured the walls and found them to be 216 feet thick. And again, this is according to the human standard uh, used by the angel. This is an interesting translation from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Again, Revelation 21, 15 through 17. And I think with these, uh, trying to put these into terms and, and measurements that we can kind of put our, our head and, and mind around. Uh, but it's still, it just, it just boggles the imagination. Again, the, the size of this city, 1,400 miles, length, width, height. Uh, one person said, as he did his calculations, and you can check on this too, but he said, larger than India, another 600,000 floors, room for billions, and however you want to try to extrapolate that, I think we get the picture in this way that John was expressing. This, there's a great, great space for us that he is prepared. And there are many rooms, and there is room for you. I'm going to say it again. There is room for you. I don't know, in your life, as you grew in years and age and whatever age you're at, I don't know how long it was before you realized, in this life, there's maybe not always room for me. Maybe you don't make that team. Oh, I guess there wasn't room for me on that team. You don't get that job. Or the school that you wanted to go to doesn't accept you. Maybe even... There wasn't room for you as you think about family and maybe not even given the time of day by a dad or another significant person in your life or maybe even a spouse. But I want you to remember there is room for you in God's house. There is room for you. And remember that the home that God is preparing for us, there is plenty, there is provision, there is all that we need. I'd like to read from uh, uh, Revelation 22, verses 1 and 2. Think about what is provided. And the angel showed me the river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Again, for everyone, that God's provided enough for everyone. I think about those who are living on a paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck life, or or day-to-day, uh, -day, or even going through unemployment and challenges, right? Ah, oh, are we going to have enough? Are we going to make it through this, this season? And I, we know the reports, and some of you personally are experiencing, or we see others that are going through trials, or not being able to have their livelihood continue through their business or whatnot. And uh, I, I hope that you can feel free to reach out to Community of Hope, too. If you're going through any trials or struggles for prayer, for just letting us know the needs that are there, that we have people that would like to help as we're able to, and if you know of someone that you love is struggling. Again, God has space, and there's room, and there is plenty for you and for me and for all. 
Now, some might say, even in the midst of this promise, some might say, well, (laughs) your God's really going to invite me in? After all that I've done that I'm not proud of, the things that I've, sins I've committed, the pain that I've caused, really God's going to let me into this perfect place, this beautiful city? And I want you to remember this. I need to remember this. That God has grace for us. I'll say that again. God has grace for us. In uh, just uh, a couple of weeks, uh, last Sunday in May, we're going to start our new summer Bible series, uh, worship series, called Real People, Real Faith, Men and Women of the Bible. God using imperfect people to change the world. And so we're going to dive deep into some of these core uh, people of the Bible from the Old Testament, New Testament, men and women, reminding ourselves again, yeah, these weren't people that were that sometimes even, even as Christians, we kind of put them on a pedestal thinking they were more holy or better than anyone. But, you know, their sins were many. They failed. They struggled. But yet God used them just like he uses me and you, imperfect people. And when you think about those who are in heaven, remember that they are only there by the great grace of God. The great, great grace of God. Any of us that are, uh, uh, that have either passed on to life eternal or as we await that final day, it's only by the grace of God that we enter. And Jesus says, I have grace for you. And again, some of you need to hear that. I know today. You might think, oh, God's ticked off at you, but he says no. It's through faith in my son, Jesus Christ, trusting in him and what he has done on the cross, that you have access to heaven. And through Jesus, your name is written in the book of life. In Revelation 22, verse 3, we read, No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. No longer will there be any more curse. And sin is gone. Our tendency to sin is gone. No more curse. No more sin. No more consequences to sin. All the havoc and chaos in the world. The curse is gone. So gone is cancer. Gone are viruses. Gone are tear-stained divorce papers. Gone is disease. Gone is mental illness. Physical, emotional pain, all those things God has taken care of. And we see now a world that's filled with nothing but goodness, kindness, love, joy in each person's heart. And that day, brothers and sisters, that day is coming. Do you believe it? Amen? So no matter what trial, no matter what physical challenges, even daily, that you're facing right now, don't give up. This coronavirus season feels more like an endless marathon. Uh, and it feels like, uh, I know, the weariness and, and the heaviness is, is getting on us. And to that emotion of, of struggle or trial or what if, uh, God says, lift up your eyes, look to me. Almost finished. And I think about, again, hearing those witnesses who have gone before us calling our name. Hang in there. Uh, don't, don't give up. Right? And we think about those who have gone before us in faith. And maybe it's a, a grandparent or a parent. Maybe even a child. Spouse. Maybe it's a Sunday school teacher or a, or a good friend that even uh, maybe is now with the Lord. But has one that had an impact, a significant impact on your life. Remember those witnesses. And somehow, in some way, those great cloud of witnesses that will be cheering us on as we enter into heaven on that final day. There was a beautiful scene from a movie I recently saw. And I'm sorry, it's been out. You've had a chance to watch it, I think. So, spoiler alert, close your ears if you don't want to hear this movie. I still believe. But there was a beautiful scene near the end of that that, uh, where one of the main characters has battled through cancer. And the very end of that scene, as she looked up to her husband and said, I'm healed. A beautiful glimpse of heaven, because she was soon to, in moments, pass away. 
but she spoke those words, I'm healed, as God gave her that vision that she is safe and secure in Jesus. Her home is in heaven, and she truly was healed as her destination was now in her eternal home. There was a doctor that once said to his upcoming uh, surgery patient, he told the woman about her, the procedure, it was very, very serious. And somehow due to the nature of the operation, uh, he could operate either on the left or right side of her, her brain, but uh, you'd, she, would eat, she had a risk on the left side, let's just say, of losing one thing, on the right side of losing the other. The two things were either eyesight or memory. Again, left or right side. I can make this, I can do this procedure, but if I operate on the left side, let's say it's eyesight, uh, right side, uh, memory. Anyway, which would you rather risk losing? And she said to the doctor, I got to think about this. And finally, after a couple of days, she said to her doctor, and again, these weren't likely to happen, they, but they could. But she said, you know, if I had to lose one, I'd choose to lose my memory. And the doctor said, okay, valid, okay, why, why is that? And she said, I ra- I'd rather see where I'm going than know where I've been. I'll say that again. I'd rather see where I'm going than know where I've been. Looking ahead, what awaits us? And seeing what God is going to do in the eternal home that awaits one, each one of us as we look to Christ, as we place our trust in him, and as in that final day we see Jesus our King who died for us, who will come for us, and who has promised us. And I'd like to close by reading this verse that read earlier, and if you want to read it with me from Revelation 21.5. He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Amen. I'd like you to reflect on this, maybe with the, the people that you're with today and at your home, or, or personally to think about if you're, if you're by yourself. But I'd like you to think and, and pray about these things uh, as you apply this to your life today. Maybe just talk with one another. What do you imagine it will be like to look into the face of the Lord, to, to uh, be in heaven? And why do you think maybe for some of us it's difficult to imagine how wonderful it will be? Because, you, know, you know, we only see, as we talk about the lower story, we kind of just put everything in the lower story earthly perspective. We can't always get our eyes to that upper story, bigger picture of what's going to happen. But... Um, talk about it. What will it be like? How about for today? Why is it important to think about and set your hope on heaven? How does this impact your life today? As you think about, you know what? I'm a, I'm a temporary resident here. My home is in heaven. How does that impact your life as you think about, again, where our true home is coming and where it will be? And I want to always offer this question and reminder that God wants you to be with him forever. He longs for you to receive his grace. Have you received him? Have you accepted Jesus into your heart, into your life? Are you dependent upon his grace as we share? No other way that we can enter heaven. It's not by our works, not by what we've done, but only by God's grace that any of us can be uh, stand righteous before a holy God. Only by God's grace and what Jesus has done. If you need that reminder, if you need to just refresh that reminder in your heart to pray with me and, and to talk with me if there's a question that you have about that or how to know uh, that you have that home with God forever, I'd be glad to talk with you, to pray with you about that as well. God has been good in leading us through this season, and God will continue to be faithful. As I mentioned, uh, um, I would love for you to share with me uh, next week uh, any testimonials that you have about how studying God's word, whether it's an obscure reference in the Old Testament or one of these powerful promises of Jesus in the New Testament, if there's something that, or just a general phrase, or it could be 30 seconds, it could be two minutes, but if, there, if you'd like to share, I would love to receive those, uh, just those video uh, clips. And if that's difficult for you, even to write it down on an email and send it to me, I'd be glad to read that too. But how has uh, God made an impact? Uh, how has God impacted your life? through going through his word in this way during this year. 
But let's pray as we think on, again, what God has done and what God is doing. Um, appreciate, again, the prayer requests, and I'll try to read as many of these as, as I can as I receive uh, prayer requests. But I'd like to just start with a, a prayer for uh, moms today. A prayer for this, uh, uh, this day that um, uh, is set aside to remember precious people in our lives. Uh, our earthly moms, uh, I think we remember too, women who have made such an impact in our lives. And whether or not uh, they've been a, a mother in a physical sense, to just be give thanks to God for the women who have made such an impact. And maybe it's an, an aunt or a cousin or just a faithful friend that's been there. Uh, again, thankful to God as we recognize uh, mothers on this day. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for today. Thank you for these promises that we have in your word. And I pray for anyone struggling today uh, with uh, just the challenges of this season. And deeper than that, challenges of just wrestling with their eternal uh, destiny, their home. Uh, Lord Jesus, come to each heart that's open to receive you. Come, Lord Jesus. We trust you. We believe in you. We acknowledge our need as sinners. We need a Savior. I need a Savior. Come, Lord Jesus, into my heart. Fill me, forgive me, renew me. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for these people that are special and precious in our lives. I thank you for my mom and uh, all that she has meant to me and my family, for my wife, Sarah. And Lord, as we think about those you know, that we would normally gather up front here at church uh, that are here in, in worship, I think about all those uh, worshiping today that our moms that are significant women in in people's lives and ask your blessing over them, cover them, protect them, their families in the midst of some of them homeschooling and going through those challenges, others at work or even on the front lines of of care and and providing for our our world in different ways. Uh, Maybe those that have children that are gone, that are far away or not able to be with today uh, as they're isolated at home, I just pray for your comfort and blessing uh, to be upon uh, the moms uh, of all ages, and these precious women that have made such an impact in our lives. Bless them, keep them, cover them, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we lift up the people that have been going through some challenging times. I continue to lift up uh, Jo Lloyds. She's recovering from surgery, thankful for successful surgery, and uh, that she's doing well in recovery. Uh, Pray for Bruce Kramer, too, uh, with surgery that either he has faced or is facing soon. Bless him, heal him, be with him. Uh, lift up Joe Lloyd's uh, husband, Frank, in a care center in Woodburn, and uh, the, uh, that the coronavirus is in that uh, care center home, and I just pray for protection for Frank and all the residents that they would be taken care of and, and safe. Uh, Lord, for others, too, that we know that are isolated in, in care homes or nursing homes, we pray for all those caring for them and pray for safety, for protection as well. Uh, Lord, we lift up again these, these prayers that have been uh, lifted up. Uh, continue to pray as Walter has lifted up prayer for Steve, uh, who needs to lose lose uh, weight of water. His heart is, is facing issues, kidneys to work better. Just bless him, and may he continue to heal. Uh, Charles uh, asks for prayers for Marla. Bless her and keep her as they're uh, just isolated in the place that they're living, but uh, keep them strong and encourage them. But for uh, Teresa, prayers for her family that uh, they would stay well. Uh, Dan, just lift up Dan and the prayers he has for those who are in need uh, in so many ways. Uh, God may bless them in so many ways. Just uh, may our eyes be open to your blessings and for that prayer. Um, Lord, I lift up those who are going through trials too, that are going through work and challenges for Mike, for Todd, for Daniel. Just provide for them. Provide employment. Continue to bless them and, and uh, provide for, for Juan, trying to, again, go through that uh, a t- tough process of getting his green card. Bless him. Keep him. Uh, Lord, we pray for others in these care centers. Uh, the, uh, as Darren Byrne lift up uh, countryside living and, and people there dealing with um, uh, COVID-19 uh, residents, uh, their help. So just continue to bless those that we know about that are in these very uh, just trying times. Uh, lift up the youth conference that's coming up as uh, uh, Hillary and others will be attending uh, for knowing more about God's love for others and having a relationship with Jesus. Just uh, pray that the, 
the work that's being done in our churches, just a good reminder of uh, churches praying for one another, and we pray for uh, believers and churches doing ministry and reaching out, whether it's through these conferences and youth conferences or worship services. Pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world. We lift up our, our, our church that meets here, Rock of Hora. Bless them and pr- pr- provide for them. Bless them through this uh, challenging time as well. Keep them in Jesus' name. Uh, Lord, for other prayer requests that have come in, again, lift up prayers for, uh, for Susan as she uh, lifts up her family and as her father passed away. Bless and keep her. Um, for Chris's uh, friend, Dennis, uh, bless him in the midst of uh, difficult times and the, and the coronavirus uh, diagnosis as well. Uh, keep him, Lord. For uh, Chris's daughter, Amy, bless her as she battles cancer. Uh, Lord, we just uh, pray for all these uh, needs and burdens that are on our hearts. We pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders of our, of our government, uh, governors, president, other leaders that are um, in the midst of a lot of tough decisions. And just pray for understanding and peace within our, our communities, our states, our nation, and throughout the world, too, that people would, would support one another and, and bless one another. Lord, we pray through this time. We praise you and thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, Thank you, God, for leading us through all these days and seasons that you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen. As we now prepare our hearts to uh, celebrate communion, I hope that you've gathered those elements for communion uh, to be with you, to celebrate with your family or by yourself. And uh, let's pray this prayer together, just a prayer of confession and forgiveness that uh, we can encourage one another, though apart, we can know that we are together in acknowledging our need for a Savior in Jesus. So I invite you to, as I lead, to pray with me. Lord, you have shown your patience and mercy to us by your willingness to forgive our sin. Hear the prayer of our humble hearts. Heavenly Father, we come before you today and confess that all too often we have lived for ourselves and forgotten that we are yours. For all our failures and shortcomings, we ask your forgiveness. And we seek your strength to walk in your ways every day. Give us clear minds and open hearts so that our lives may be living witnesses to you in our world. God, our Heavenly Father, has freed us from sin through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. To those who love and believe in him, he gives the gifts of life and salvation as we follow him. God promises to strengthen us and help us to shine his light and share his love with those around us. Amen. I invite you now to, uh, uh, where you are at home, to celebrate uh, the gift of God and Holy Communion as we remember in the night in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim our Lord's death and his glorious resurrection until that day that Jesus comes again. I invite you to pray with me our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So take and receive. Receive the promises, the hope of heaven, as you receive uh, the bread, the juice, the wine, as we receive this in this special way, and remind one another, this is the body of Christ given for you. It says the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. So take and receive. Take a moment just to pray with one another to receive these elements of God's love in Holy Communion.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and on to everlasting life. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping today. And as we conclude with a, a final song, uh, don't forget, hang on after the worship concludes because you're going to have this uh, really great, great little uh, video that's been compiled. Thanks again to Hillary for compiling it. That'll give uh, this reflection. Several of us from Community of Hope that have shared little memories and thanks and happy Mother's Day to our moms. So be sure to hang on as the service concludes. But uh, before we do that, let's again sing a beautiful song. Thank you for Mike and Jono for leading us in a, a great song as we conclude this revelation and through the Bible series. The big, uh, I'd like to first start with the, uh, the middle of the song. There's a call and response, and I can't really do both parts at the same time. Uh, I asked John if he wanted to sing the girl part, and he, he said, I'll play the girl part. So um, you can hear the melody as he plays it, but I, I just wanted to refresh our memories on how this part goes. The guy part starts and it says, you will reign forever. If you're at home, sing along. You will reign forever. One more time, guys. You will reign forever. All right, that sounds awesome. And if you were listening closely, John was playing the women's part. And it, you have to wait for the word forever, and then that's when you come in. So you sing. You will reign. Let your glory fill the earth. Try that. Let your glory fill the earth. One more time. Let your glory fill the earth. All right, and just keep singing along until we, uh, until we go to the next section, I guess. So, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be great. We're gonna sing it all together, separately, and it's gonna sound wonderful to God's ears. So, I encourage you to sing at the top of your lungs.
Come, let us adore him. Behold our King. Nothing can compare. Come, let us adore him. Amen. Praise God. He's faithful, and he will be with you. So as we go from here, let's go in peace. Let's serve the Lord. Thanks be to God, and give him heaven. God bless you. Have a wonderful Mother's Day, and enjoy this beautiful tribute as we close our worship time, thanking God for uh, the moms, the precious women in our life. God bless you. Hello and happy Mother's Day from Pastor John and Sarah. We're uh, wanting to wish all the moms and special women in our life at Community of Hope a happy Mother's Day. And I want to wish my mom, Connie, a happy Mother's Day in Longview. And my mom, Barbara, a happy Mother's Day in California. So again, have a great day today and a special happy Mother's Day too to my wife, Sarah. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. Okay, go. I love you, Mom, and I love giving smooches to you. What else do you love about um, your mom? I know. What? Eating lunch with you and having dinner with you. Playing games? Playing games also. And reading stories? And reading stories. Okay. And snuggling with you. And putting my feet in between yours. And for you telling a story at night time. That's Dad, great. I think that's it, Dad. Okay, say Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, uh, and... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, we love you. Hi, Mom, I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's, Happy Mother's Day. Day. I'm so grateful to have such a wonderful mom that's also my best friend. Love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. I'm so happy to have such a supportive and caring mom. Happy Mother's Day. I'm so grateful for you, Mom, and how thoughtful and considerate you are. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I hope you're having a great day, and you're the best. We love you. Love you. Happy love Mother's you, Mom. Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. You're the greatest mom ever. Thank you for all that you do. I want to take you fishing on Mother's Day. Sorry, I counted the wrong last time this time I wrote down. Wait, let's do it on that side, then the sun's not in your eyes. Then it's gonna be dark, and the sun's gonna, gonna be behind be us. So it doesn't matter. Let's just go. Make okay. guys be happy. Ready? Happy Mother's Day! Yay! <laughs> we love you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Hi, mom. We wanted to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Day. We love you so much and hope you feel special today, even though we can't celebrate like normal. Love you. And I also wanted to give a little shout out to my small group, Jan, Carrie, Cindy, Dana, and my mom. Um, I love you guys all so much as well, and you are all like moms to me also. So I hope everyone has a fun day celebrating. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's day. day. We know it sounds cheesy. But we just wanted to say, we think you're really great. You make everything butter. And we might even say, you're pretty super. <laughs>